Let's translate 1 Timothy 2, verse 12. But in order to translate verse 12, you do have to look at the entire context. So we will take a look at chapter 2. More specifically, verses 8 through 12, but our primary focus is that final verse, verse 12. So literally, in Greek, verse 12 says, To teach, but to a woman, not I permit, nor to have authority over a man, but to be in quietness. What the heck does that mean? So... If we diagram this whole section, it reads, Therefore, I desire or I wish, I will, and to pray in every place, raising holy hands, separate from anger. And this says dialogue, but in, in this sense of dialogue, it's really along the lines of contentious uh, arguments. Thus also, women to adorn themselves in uh, clothing, respectable clothing, uh, with modesty and prudence, that is wisdom, not with elaborate hairstyles, not with gold or pearls or uh, expensive clothing, but what is proper for women who profess godliness through good works. So they're to adorn themselves through good works. That's the end of that sentence. Now we have a new one. The main verb of that first sentence is I wish, I desire, I will. It's not a command. It's authoritative, no doubt, but it's not a command. Here we have a command, manthanato. So let a woman learn in silence, in all submission. So this is a command. They have to let women learn. They're to learn in silence, in all submission, but they are to learn. The men cannot keep women from learning. They are to learn. They need to learn. But epitrepo, to permit, allow. Now, here it says command in the gloss. We'll look at that in a moment. I am not permitting a woman to teach a man, nor to have authority over a man but to be in silence. So we have an isichia, an isichia, so we can see the flow of thought. It's also a singular flow. We have our connective de. So the one command, let a woman learn, is really informing and overseeing this entire sentence. So let a woman learn. So manthano, to gain knowledge or skill by instruction, to learn. Plain sense, easy to follow in all submission, ipotagi. So this is passive in our literature in the New Testament, the state of submissiveness, subjection, subordination, as opposed to setting oneself up as controller. So you're to learn by being submissive, right? You're not the one in, in control. You're the one there to learn. So this still has to do with the learning atmosphere, subordinating herself in every respect because you are learning, right? You don't presume to know everything when you go to class to learn from the teacher. No, you subordinate, you subject, you submit yourself to the teacher, and you learn. And then, but, so it can mean and, for, now, then, so, that is, at the same time, but on the other hand, as a marker of contrast, Marker of heightened emphasis, but also in combination with K. Well, we don't have a combination with K, so I'm going to suggest here it's a marker of contrast. You're to learn, but I am not permitting a woman to teach. So the emphasis is on teaching here, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. What is epitrepo? It's to allow someone to do something, allow or permit. It can mean order or instruct, and so in that sense it can be a command, uh, but you can see here it's not the sense. Notice it is it is itself a present indicative. So it's not a command. 
That's not to say it's not authoritative, but it's not a command. Greek has many ways of doing commands. One would be the imperative. One would be a use of the subjunctive. Generally speaking, Greek doesn't use the indicative to make a command. What's interesting to see is that in Wallace, when we look at the present tense and we look at broadband presence and we look at gnomic presence underneath the broadband, this is where we're going to see our example, 1 Timothy 2, verse 12, except it's listed under debatable examples, so it's not ironclad. What he says is epitrepo here in the present tense is, I do not permit a woman. Some people argue it's descriptive. I do not. Descriptive in the sense that, well, it's temporary. I do not presently permit. I don't see that as being in any way, shape, or form being possible. Uh, and he argues his reasons why. Um, he says, number one, it's overly subtle without some temporal indicator such as arti or nin. This view begs the question. Two, were we to do this with other commands in the present tense, our resultant ex exegesis would be both capricious and ludicrous. He points to Ephesians 5.18. The problem with Ephesians 5.18 is this is an imperative. It is a command. Epitrepo is in the indicative mood. I just don't see it being a command. It's not even remotely close to Ephesians 5.18. He also says, grammatically, the present tense is used with a generic object, gineki, suggesting that it should be taken as a gnomic present. Contextually, the exhortation seems to be rooted in creation rather than an address to a temporary situation. So by tying it to creation, he argues it is timeless. If it's timeless, it's gnomic. Now, is that true in the Septuagint for, let's say, the Ten Commandments? Let's look. Verse 14 is very helpful. You can see here, it is negated future active indicative. This is another way Greek can do commands. It uses the future indicative, not the present indicative. So future indicative, future indicative, future indicative, future indicative. So my point is epitrepo being in the indicative present tense, it's not a command. Now that's not to say it's not authoritative. I'm not saying Paul's words have no meaning. I'm not saying Paul's words lack authority. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I am pointing out simply, grammatically speaking, this is not a command. So I am not permitting a woman. So often what happens is you can have uh, the, uh, the person who is designated with the permission or lack thereof in the dative. So I am not permitting a woman. So we're not going to say, I'm not permitting to a woman, even though it's dative. I'm not permitting a woman. And then the infinitive marks out what is being permitted, or in this case, uh, not permitted. Teaching. Didasco. So this is telling someone what to do, tell, instruct, providing instruction formally or inform informally to teach. So let a woman learn, but not teach. I'm not permitting her to teach. I'm neither permitting her to teach nor to have authority over a man. Now, often teo here is challenging because as you can see, it doesn't occur very often. It's to assume a stance of independent authority, give orders to, dictate to. It uses the genitive of persons, so to give authority to a man, and it's combined with didaskin. So practically, Per BDAG here, it says, tell a man what to do. I'm not permitting a woman to tell a man what to do. So you can see the contrast. You're, you're to learn in full submission, right? You're to have this subordination about you when you go to learn. Be humble. Lower yourself. You're going to learn. Don't be a know-it-all. Consequently, because you are to learn, don't be trying to teach a man. Don't be trying to have authority over the man. Don't, don't be trying to give orders to a man. But, but this teach and authority is in the contrast of 
being a learner. You are to learn. You are to learn. Now, I used to think that this construction where you have uk and then infinitive and then ude and infinitive, it was essentially uh, saying you can't teach in an authoritative way. And I used to think authentic meant something like dominating way. The reason for that is you have to look at authentic in LSJ, Liddell Scott Jones. Authenteo, to have full power or authority over. Commit a murder. You can also see it's cognate. Authentis, murderer. Can even mean suicide or one of a murderer's family. Uh, but you can also see authentis means perpetrator, author. And through the works of Linda Belleville and other writers, uh, I did think that for a while, but it just doesn't seem to be the case here. Part of Belleville's argument is that this construction with uk infinitive, ude infinitive, makes it like this is really almost a an, an adjective or an adverb. You, you won't teach in an authoritative way or, or domineering way. Uh, I just don't see a basis for that. Uh, if you use accordance here, you can you can see this, change it to words, and we can say u, and then, whoops, within 10, and then verb, infinitive, and then within 10, and then uk, or ude rather, and then within 10, verb, infinitive. If I got my syntax right, this should search. Oh, I put the wrong, put the wrong one. Now that I've fixed the syntax, it should work. Why am I still getting this wrong? So what we're searching for is the u infinitive ude infinitive construction, but we're specifically looking for an infinitive within ten words of u, and infinitive within ten words of ude. And there's only one actual similar one, and that's Acts 16.21. We have u, infinitive, ude, infinitive. For some reason, ude here isn't showing up in red like it should. Uh, but this is the only other direct parallel. It does not have epitrepo, but it does have uh, excestin, which is uh, to be right or to be possible. So it says, it is not possible for us to accept nor to make them to be Roman. And are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or serve. So in this case, it is not lawful. So it's not a direct, direct parallel, but what it shows us is uh, with the infinitives this one is not acting as an adverb for this one. And so I just can't say that Belleville's theory or application is correct. Uh, I would not say that anyways. I think she would. I wouldn't. So this construction doesn't make sense to me from, from a Belleville standpoint. Uh, I do think the traditional understanding of it as teach and authority makes sense. I don't see it as domineer or dominate for authentine. I think it's just to have authority. But the premise of the whole chapter is we want all people to be saved. God wants all people to be saved. And the overall theme is prayer with peace. We don't want to disrupt the peace. Now, one of the things that's helpful is seeing this verse in the larger context. So let's look at the rest of chapter two. Therefore, I first of all things made prayer, supplication, intercession, thanksgiving on behalf of all men. So Paul is in, in exhorting Timothy and consequently whatever audience Timothy is working with and subsequently to us to make prayer for everything. 
And this is prayer and intercession, but also thanksgiving on behalf of all men. This isn't just males. This is all people. Prayer for kings. Prayer for all those who are in authority. Iberochi. In order that quiet and peaceful lives we might lead in all godliness and reverence. In order that we might lead quiet and peaceful lives. Quiet, tranquil, quiet, well-ordered. Bios, this is life, activity. Lead an orderly life. One that does not disturb the peace. Interesting. So that we might lead quiet and peaceful lives in godliness and uh, reverence. Ev Sevilla. So this is devoutness, piety, godliness. Semnotiti. This is semnotis. A manner or mode of behavior that indicates one is above what is ordinary and therefore worthy of special respect. It's used of a human being. This is dignity, seriousness, holiness. In Latin, it would be gravitas, and it can be used of a deity, holiness. Uh, so in this context, we're talking about our lives, so this would be human beings. So uh, dignity, seriousness, holiness, reverence. This is good and pleasing before our Savior, God, who desires for all mankind to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. Oh, interesting context here. So one is we should be praying essentially for peace. And two, God wants all mankind to be saved. This is important. It's this context that informs what happens in the verses following. So while Paul might not be using commands, he's still providing authoritative instruction. And so he wants men in every place to pray with their hands raised, without anger and contention, with holy hands raised. Why? Anger, contention, is that going to disrupt the peace? And in so doing, does that hinder God's desire for all men to be saved? Women are to adorn themselves not with physical beauty, but with good works. Why? Is that to help keep the peace? Is that to help all men to be saved? Women are to learn in submission, in silence. Why? Is that to help keep the peace? Is that to help prevent hindering all men from being saved? Paul doesn't allow for women to teach or have authority over a man. Why? Is that to prevent from hindering the peace? Is that to prevent from pre prevent men from coming to faith? But women are to be in silence. So all of that is to say, the verse literally reads, and there's no escaping it, but I am not permitting a woman to teach or have authority over a man, but to be in silence. That's literally what it says. I'm not denying that. But looking in context, I think it's more involved than that. Just like I do with Ephesians 5. Women, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. There's so much more going on there than simply just those words. I'm not saying it's not authoritative, but we need to understand it in context. What do you think? Does verse 12 say that for all time and space, women may not teach any men? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, we've got some new merch. Check it out. Uh, we've got Bruk Ata Adonai here. Brand new t-shirt for the fall. We've got uh, a mug to go with it. We've got his and hers. We've got some other stuff here too with some sweatshirts and beanies. So check it out if you're looking for some merch and you want to support the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.